Hello. Blake's been sacked from doing the intro duty for this episode, so it's me. Hi, I'm Dan, and uh, you may know me from the internet as uh, Engine Mode 11. And my beautiful assistant here, he is... Uh, my name is Blake, or Break, um, and yeah, we're a couple of frauds doing a Formula One podcast, and this is our first full season. We're approaching winter testing, so my name is Blake. I used to be a performance engineer and a simulator performance engineer at Red Bull um, and Force India. So a little bit of track side stuff. We'll get into some cool track side stuff for winter testing. But uh, Dan, you hung around Red Bull for as long as they'd let you as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. I had a bit of a weird sort of career. So I started off uh, doing like system support in finance. Um, which I, see where this is, I see where this is going. Cost mm. cap. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh, this, this is, is pre-Red Bull. Completely unrelated. <laughs> completely unrelated to the cost cap. Uh, and then I ended up. At Red Bull Racing for six years as a senior systems engineer. Rock and, and roll. Then, uh, then I left and they started winning championships again. So if any Red Bull fans are listening for the first time, you're very welcome. Yeah, thank God you, they didn't have you on the finance IT systems. Jesus, they would have been absolutely ruined. Absolutely. But- We've got an uh, interesting episode uh, coming up tonight. So we've got a couple a couple bits of breaking news today. Some uh, Lance Strolls had a couple shenanigans. Uh, there's a couple of talking points from the last few reveals. We did the first couple, but uh, I don't think we'll spend too much time on that. Uh, Pirelli have announced some of the stuff to do with the tires for the season and some new rules and some new compounds, which if you're new or even confu- if you've been around for a while and you're confused, don't worry, we've got you. And um, we'll, we'll kind of, Dan and I have spent a little bit of time in different capacities at testing, and we'll just kind of talk about what you can expect from testing and what you can't expect from testing. And if you want to be disappointed, that's okay. Um, I will be too. And also, we've got some. Uh, we've got a little interaction with you guys on the uh, internets, and Dan's had some uh, some hot takes. So, and you guys have all presented your hot takes and uh, your your livery of the year um, for launches. So, we'll, let's get into it. So, l- imagine. Should we get into it now? Is it time? Why not? Let's let's go straight in. No kissing. Speaking of kissing, uh, Mister Lance Stroll might have had a little uh, incident in Spain. A little bit of um, salsa dancing, maybe with a car on a bicycle, or just maybe solo solo dancing. It's not really clear, but uh, Lance Stroll is going to miss winter testing. Yeah, I think he shithoused his way into uh, the hospital for a little visit. Um, he, I think apparently it was like a stationary exercise bike, is what I'm hearing. So I think maybe Alonso may have been in there before him, <laughs> he's just... loosening a few bolts or something. Crack! Oh, he's got that. He's the dude outside in the um the waist, like the long jacket with the you know chrome pipe under the under the yeah. uh, sleeve or something. Man, but yeah, like imagine. And, uh, well, so here's so we we got the announcement a few hours ago, like from the Aston Martin account saying Lance has had a bit of an incident and he won't be taking part in the test. But uh, there's another sort of gossip. Twitter account is saying that apparently uh, they've seen Lance Stroll leaving a Spanish hospital with his arm in a cast, so he might oh might, might not have him for the first race. Fraudulence, fraudulence. Imagine your dad buys you a Formula One team and you fall off a bike before, and that sucks. This kind of stuff's happening, and I think a lot of the the paddock you'll see uh, in the past. A lot of the guys are into cycling and triathlons and stuff too. Jensen, Jensen was huge into his triathlons. I remember once in the paddock. There was something happening on the track and all the drivers, um, a lot of the drivers and personnel in the paddock, when you're done with your work on like Thursday night, you'll go run. I can't remember. I think it was in Austria one year. There was after track activities. And so Jensen's got a triathlon and he's doing laps up and down the paddock to get his running in. I was like, I'm not sure how to feel about this. This dude's dedicated. But anyway, a lot of the guys. See, did you ever see the website where everyone used to stick their times up online is yeah bernie, still going no i think bernie sacked it off and now it might uh, be back so basically all the all the staff in the paddock had access to a website and if you ran the track you would you'd upload your time from your uh, garmin and uh yeah and you'd see, yeah but it was just like a it's just like a little little banter like people just put in and then there's some pretty fast people in the paddock a couple of um oh yeah it's ridiculous. iron iron men and iron women athletes as well a bunch of lunatics I uh, I did it once, so I ran uh, Barcelona. Uh, I can't remember what year it was, but if anyone knows me and has seen me, will tell you I'm not the running sort of type of guy, right? I'm powerfully built, let's say. Yeah. Christ, I thought I was going to die just by like the back straight, let alone anywhere near <laughs> around to the uh, front again. 
But Never it, again. It's good though. It's good because you're trapped in the caravan with a bunch of people for 20 plus weeks a year if you're doing it full time or even even a weekend, you know, a full week trip from including setup for you probably and out. It's enough. It's like I need some some space because oh, yeah. this truck smells like farts. I got to get out of it. But so regarding Lance, it looks like uh, the reserve driver um, is possibly going to be Van Dorn or Drogovic, but Van Dorn has got the Formula E this weekend in South Africa. So that takes him out of the winter testing. Um, so there's Drogovic. And hey, what if we saw Seb come back? Just for a race. Because he's, he's driven that car quite recently. Drogovic, did he, he did a test last season with... It's been ages ago. Yeah. For testing, I think Alonso will just do three days. Because what we've got is three days now. So yeah, exactly. He, he could it. probably just power three days. Yeah. Um, um Mick Schumacher, maybe. Yeah, but he's he's got to deal with he's got to deal with McLaren as well as Mercedes. So that's the classic. You saw it last year with DeVries. Like they literally Mercedes put him in every single car they could to get him seat time, um, and then they've let him go to Alpha Tauri. Yeah, I think that's like a, a Mercedes PU sort of deal, though, isn't it? So yeah. they're available to all the P uh, Mercedes PU. Yeah. That's then that's that's usually a perk that they've got with that. They're like yeah. But um, also this this same thing happened to Alonso in 2021. I think he had a cycling accident and had like jaw surgery. So this isn't the first time. No, and taking a step back to what I previously just said, right? Here's what I want to happen. Okay. I want Mick Schumacher to go into the Aston. Yeah. And I, and I want him to podium on his first race. <sighs> Let's go. And lad. then I want the cameras to immediately cut to Hulkenberg, and just see his reaction. Who hurt you, dude? Who hurt you? <laughs> uh, that's it. That's that's what we're going for. Oh, I love that. So that's a little. That's 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 something that Drive to Survive would probably need to pay you because they will have to do that. So yeah, that's that's my secret reveal announcement. I'm actually now secretly working as the scriptwriter for DTS. I saw a clip of uh, Lando and a couple of the Quadrant people like reacting to something, and then they're like. What the actual fuck is this? They're like taking a, a piece of footage from the track. Like he ran me off from, and then the audio clip of he ran me off from like a different race or somewhere else. And it's just like, all right, guys, reaching a little bit. But that's I'm not hating on Drive to Survive. It's it's a great drama, but often it's not really what happened. But it doesn't matter. None of this is none of this is real anyway. None of this matters. This podcast, Formula One, uh, Twitch, also not real. So, <laughs> hey, none of this is real. But anyway, well, shall we shall we wrap up the liveries? We got a couple interesting talking points. Who who do we want to talk about? I think Mercedes and Ferrari. I kind of didn't really pay any attention to the Alpine launch, except our uh, F one esports creator Tom was there live streaming the event, which was quite a little production and a great access and a pretty badass stream. That's T H O M B, one of the homies. That was really cool. But that was yep. that was my experience of the uh, that so... launch. I saw the Alpine hung a show car off the roof of Printworks in London. Yeah, that was, a, was like quite a, wild. A big like music a, venue, I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know what that is, it's a big music venue in London. It's, it's not a print um, shop. No, the I think it used to be though. I think uh -huh. that's like it's one of those gentrified dance places. Ew, this is where we used to print newspapers. Now we're dancing. Mm, now you can do really expensive questionable powders and <laughs> yeah. dance to repetitive music sort of thing. Uh, uh. Um. But yeah, Alpine had their launch, bless them, but nobody really cared because everyone had already seen the photos because the someone uh, there was a photographer. I think, right, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but yeah. I believe it may have been the Aston Martin photographer that they hired was staying in the Silverstone Hotel, which is like got a view of the straight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the Hyder Hilton that's literally on the, the straight. The circuit, yeah. And uh, he uploaded a photo. It was like, oh, there's an Alpine driving around. And it basically was the new car and new livery and everything. So it was oh. like, okay. GG's, mate. Like, no one cares. We've already seen it. Thanks. Yeah. But uh, that looked like they put on a, a bit of a show. But I think Mercedes and it did a, had a really interesting reveal that's got a couple of interesting talking points. So Toto... Obviously, we've got a black Mercedes. I think that thing is a 12 out of 10. That thing is hot. I like black race cars. Black race cars are fast. But there's a couple problems with a lot of people potentially going with, with dark liveried cars or no painted cars. But we'll get back to that. But one of the things that Toto talked about was this is kind of like a engineering, practical, and... F 
a practical and the look of the old Silver Arrow story. So back the W25 thing, it was in 1934, 1935. Um, the car was painted white and it was a kilo overweight. So they stripped all the paint off down to the aluminium. I said that for you, uh, for my American friends, of which our audience is a lot of you. I meant aluminum. Dan, don't look at me like that. Aluminium. <laughs> blimey. Um, oh, blimey, Governor. So they, they stripped the paint off, and um, the Mercedes has a lot of bare carbon on their car. That thing looks so damn good. To the point, though, a lot of Formula One cars are still overweight. The minimum weight is 798 kilograms. Um, and some teams appear to be still struggling. At the end of last season, we still had quite a few teams overweight. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some teams running a couple of extra kilos also, because if they're overweight, that means you don't have flexibility on your weight distribution, which is very important for handling and balance. So uh, what did you what did you think of the Mercedes reveal? Anything else that comes to mind? Uh, I enjoyed how Patronus Malaysia, I think it was, or someone, um, accidentally set the live stream to go an hour early and the camera was directly on the car. Oh, they, so they we also basically own goal, uh, Mercedes and yeah. their partners leaked their car beforehand. Um, but no, it seemed all right. Uh, I like it. I like it. It looks good. Um, someone in the chat is asking me to say aluminum. And I hate it. Ugh. It sounds nice though. It's buttery. It's slick. It's it's just like a better version of something. Mm. But I'm um, gonna go completely off topic now. So nah. But like back back to the back to the weight thing quickly. And I saw somebody message um, about that in chat. The minimum weight of a Formula One car includes the driver. So a lighter driver. Um, let's say you've got a guy like Yuki in the car. Yuki and DeVries are both quite um, short and probably very light. But if you had two differing people that were you know. A lot heavier than each other the, the lighter driver would potentially have an advantage if they could put more ballast on the car which means more flexibility over weight distribution or just a lower center of gravity but yeah yeah you i want to tell me what you think about this right okay we've seen a lot of bare carbon this year on the livery reveals right Yep. We've seen Mercedes go basically a bare carbon car with a painted stripe from the nose box up over the engine cover towards the back yeah. What do you think would happen if all the teams said, you know what, we're going to screw off our liveries and we're just going to run as much bare carbon as possible with a couple of indicating marks and driver numbers? Would you find that troublesome as A, uh, a, a veteran watcher of Formula One or B, potentially as a novice? We're going to have to extrapolate to uh, what, we, what we think for people that might be new to the sport. I personally, I well, tell me what you think. I was going to say, I won't take offense that you called me a veteran. Um, my granddad. All. I'm a young spring chicken, I I'm, have you know. I'm older than you. Running around after three children, two dogs, and a wife keeps you young, mate, as my bones click. Oh, you look good, though. You do look good. Thank you. Thank you. Don't tell me what I already know. Um, what was, what was the question? God. <laughs> no, but, like, what do you think? Like, what what if a lot of the teams started stripping back their liveries and you had, you know, 80% bare carbon cars? Would that be difficult? I mean, for me, no, I wouldn't care less, but I believe it would get to a stage where Liberty Media would turn up and say, sorry, guys, you all look the same. This is getting a bit boring watching on telly. Could you uh, mandate some color? Yeah, I I don't ever want to see that because that's like one of those things. It's like if you can get a technical advantage from running a bare carbon car, so be it. But if there's teams that are under the weight limit, I think Alpha was under the weight limit last year. They were one of the few teams not positioned not petitioning to reduce or increase the minimum weight but they started under the limit uh and then that's when their floor kept disintegrating so they realized right maybe we should put some weight back into the floor mm. yeah but uh, yeah it sounds like the fi are just keeping the minimum weight there and teams are gonna have to figure it out and if that means a handful of cars are uh mm. well, I'd, they I'd... wanted to they wanted to reduce it even more, didn't they? But all the teams pushed back. I Correct. Think it to go down by, was it two or three kilos? Yeah, I heard rumors year. of that. And then people are just like, nah, mate, we're still over. So I think people are still overweight. Yeah. Yeah, but someone someone raises a good point. Can you imagine uh, Crofty and Brundle trying to commentate if all the cars look the same? No, nah, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to do. Like, you would eventually figure it out, but they're trying to, you know, split instant. Uh, who is that? Norris Russell. No, it's just a car. A car collided with another car, and we'll have to wait and see when it flips over, yeah. so we can see the color on the engine cover. Yeah, there's just black pieces of bodywork everywhere. Couldn't tell you what car yeah. they're from. 
honestly, I so I made it. I made a TikTok about that, talking about the discussion. Will, will the FIA or Liberty Media step in? And I got a lot of really interesting comments about it. But like, it's seriously something I think they would consider. But I don't want that to happen. I'm just saying, like, I've been around long enough to know what those people are like when they make decisions like that. They're like, this looks weird. We have to do something. And when they say they can do it, and they could push it through, they could do it probably. But um, yeah, I don't. They could, but I don't think. I think the sponsors would get a bit knocked off yeah. because a big part of this is visibility and and you know. Yeah. seeing your brand and if you can't see it because you've got a tiny sticker on a black car or whatever eventually even sponsors will turn around and say could you please make it a bit more fucking visible please we can't see what we've paid 20 million for are you talking about alfa romeo because they've got like literally it looks like one of those like you know honda show cars you know with the honda civic with like fifty thousand stickers across the side of it they've, they've got some uh they've got some stuff across the nose box of that car oh yeah that's probably holding it together oh geez oh my god Oh my God! But um, let's 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 switch gears. That Ferrari reveal was something, wasn't it? That Ferrari reveal. I will, yeah, I'll give it to them. So if you didn't watch it, uh, basically it was at their is it Fier Fiorano? Is yeah. that what they call that test track? Yeah, they got their own little test track, and uh, basically everyone was sitting in the stands. They built like this giant sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, stage front. Yeah. And then just sort of like peeled back the curtains and, and the reveal was the car on track. And if you're going to do a reveal, that's how you do a reveal. Bellissimo. It, there was something, there was something so charming about it. And I understand how they gaslight thousands and millions of Tifosi into still supporting them. It was so fucking charming and so cool. And it was, it was one of the things It was like, literally fuck the sponsors. This is Ferrari. Here's the new car. It, here's the drivers. Uh, they had a couple of other, you know, um, people presenting the stuff. It was really good. It was super slick, and I loved every second of it. And the car was beautiful. If you you can't not like the Ferrari. But here's here's something. People are like mm. the Red Bull looks the exact same as last year. I'm like, <laughs> have you looked at a have you looked at a Ferrari lately? But I get it. I no, it's not it's not have to be for everybody. It doesn't have to be. Pick one. Oh, right, controversial here. Go on. I I say within the last few years, at least, for, I'd say Ferrari has changed their uh, livery more than what Red Bull has. Possible using a matte paint from a gloss. Well, yeah, and like there's <laughs> random sections of it black and things like that. So this year they got quite a large bare carbon part, which I don't like. I don't think that. Looks no, it looks good. ugly. Um, but they had that god awful green thing as well for mission whatever. Mission fraudulent on yeah. the um, it's real not wood. not cigarettes but Engine cigarettes. Cover. Yeah, um, whereas <laughs> the Red Bull one, it's literally like it did say Red Bull on the side pod. Now it says Oracle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it. I I'm not slating the Red Bull livery. I just it's very samey. Mm. I think Ferrari have changed elements, more so, elements of theirs over the years than what Red Bull have. Possibly, definitely for the last couple of years, but. Uh... I, I found that Ferrari launch event really charming and passionate and fun, and I wish more teams did that like that. Do you rate that, that above the uh, uh, the launch they did where everyone was dancing around the car? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want to see. The, yeah. Not the dancing around the car, we want to see it on the track. That, that I saw that. I never saw it live, but I saw it after the fact. That was pretty fucking stupid. To me. Dancing around the track. Uh, dancing around the car. Yeah, dancing around the track. Are you talking about the uh, the, the oil protesters at Silverstone? <laughs> dancing <laughs> around the track. <laughs> oh. no, they weren't dancing. They were sitting still. Oh, fine. They were very much sitting still. Yeah, but anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Have you heard about Alfa Romeo maybe getting in trouble? Uh, is this because they were advertising a gambling company possibly that wasn't regulated Austria. in Switzerland. it wasn't regulated in uh, switzerland sorry, yeah switzerland exactly yeah so uh long story we'll keep it short but long story short alfa romeo i don't has this been concluded or not i'm not sure but basically they were a little bit of trouble because stake is a really legitimate gambling company that's no no platforms have had any issue with them at all we haven't talked about that in the last episode but um, there's laws in Switzerland which are very specific about uh, advertisement and promotion of gambling sites, or games of chance, as they were called. And um, yeah, they might be in a little bit of trouble with the um, 
the local government there. But ah, they're going to be like, ah, don't worry. They, their website's blocked everywhere. It's like, yeah, for a reason, probably. <laughs> mm. Did you see the um, uh, Alfa Romeo launch when it looked like they were in a uh, Jeremy Carl studio? Yeah. And for our American uh, listeners, that's basically our version of Jerry Springer. You are not the father. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was that was such a weird launch, man. And then the Final Fantasy VII victory music. Oh my god! That and then they they fucking leaked it as well. So they're interviewing. Um, I've forgotten who their new head guy is. He's not a team principal. He's a fuck knows what they're doing. Anyway, they were interviewing him, and then just in the background, they just randomly put a picture up on the new car before anyone had seen it. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's there's the car then. Yeah, that was. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. So, aye, aye, aye. last last thing before we get into the, the little bit about testing, and I'm sure I've got some funny stories. From, you must have some funny stories from testing as well. And we'll, we'll get to those in a second. But first, uh, Pirelli have uh, told us about what they're doing with the tires this year. Are you are you in the loop on this one? Oh, tires loop. I see what you did there. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, no, I, I'm not actually. Okay. I see um, what they had in a new compound or something. Again, sorry, I've been so busy with work. Again, I'm going off on a tangent again. I don't care. This is what you subscribe and listen exactly. to. Exactly. So I have a real life job, believe it or not. I know that comes as a shock to most people. Is your I job just... sitting out in front of Job Center? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're basically, I work in a three man team. Um, and then two weeks ago, uh, it turned into a one man team. So at the minute, I am. Uh, slammed to put it politely anyway <laughs> that, that sounds so yes, fun i'm a little bit out of the loop at the well, that's all right we, we got you covered bro but um so tell Pirelli... me about tell me about the tires Ooh, Come on, give it so to me give it to last me oh year... yeah with with odd shoes as well thank you for yeah. noticing that in yeah chat. that was really good that was really good so last year we had c1 to c5 and they would pick three per weekend and the hardest one would be the white the middle one would be yellow and the softest one would be red now we've got six compounds we've got the c0 which is last year's c1 and they've come up with a new c1 which is in the middle so we have six compounds that we can choose from um lower number harder compound bahrain we're going to use the c1 to c3 and saudi arabia and australia will use the c2 to c4 so we'll have the same compounds in two of the first three races um and the other thing which is kind of like living on the the background is we had a lot of talk of this last year um the front tire was pretty understeer so the new the front tire will be stronger this year to generate a little bit more front grip relative to the rear. Obviously, the teams will balance the setups around this, but the way the tire generates grip and falls off and gives up and the sharpness of it should be a little bit stronger this year. So we'll, I think it'll be quite difficult to pick out stuff from uh, winter testing from how the tires behave. I think we're going to have to wait for the, uh, the journalists that are on the ground there to talk with the drivers and um, see if they're asking the right questions because those are super interesting questions. Yeah, the, my biggest problem with all of this, why can't they bring back the names? Why can't we have the super hard back? And the, the uber soft. The Hyper. uber soft. Yeah, the, oh, I was at Williams, they had a um, ultra motherfucker soft, whatever the pink one was. That was great. I loved seeing yeah, that. And you could like literally just dig your fingernail into it. That's how soft it was. Mm. Mm. No, none of, just, just for clarification, though, the numbers zero through five do not correspond to a color it's whichever tires the softest of the weekend will be red middle will be yellow and the hardest will be white so uh it, it, but the thing is you as if you're overwhelmed by that don't worry about it because it doesn't really matter to most of us it's like you've got a softest tire you got a hardest tire yeah if you're overwhelmed by it don't worry because ferrari are overwhelmed by it most of the time as well <laughs> stay in stay in stay in stay in out out oh charles no take it all about yeah, geez. Um, I think it might be that time that we do that thing. Oh, what were we? Uh, Ching, cash our money and plug a sponsor. Let me talk. Honestly, this sponsor. Um, I definitely don't use them every race weekend. Shall we do it? No, you ready? We definitely don't. We definitely do not recommend using these every race weekend to uh, use F1 TV. We'll we'll explain that after that. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over. Hello, me again, just interrupt your podcast episode. 
Listen, we've been banging on about NordVPN for a while on the show, and it's finally happened. They've reached out to us and are offering an exclusive deal to our listeners. If you are fed up with not being able to access F1 TV Pro due to geographical restrictions, then this is what you need. With NordVPN, you can switch your virtual location to a country that enables the full feature set of F1 TV Pro. Tell me and Blake do it, and we've been happy customers of NordVPN for years. But Dan, I've heard VPNs are great for online protection, but they slow down your internet speed. Come on now, it's 2022. I can stream a multitude of F1 TV HD feeds while hosting a watch along on Twitch with no issues. Furthermore, NordVPN prevents my internet service provider from bandwidth throttling so I can actually use my internet connection at the speeds I pay for. They have an app for smartphones that's easy to install and use, plus it's only the price of a cup of coffee every month. So to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan and four months for free, visit nordvpn.com engine. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So give it a try, and if you like it, great. If you don't, you can call us frauds on Twitter. Simple. Now back to the episode. Wrong. We're not going back to the episode. I forgot. That's an outdated ad. It's all relevant, but it's Nord's 10th anniversary coming up. Ooh. So you get even extra discount. So if you were thinking about it before, now's your chance, because you get even more discount on top of the discount you were getting before. Done. Right. Cha-ching. And then to also make that very relevant for, for you, all our listeners, is uh, in some regions, you may not be able to access F1 TV Pro. Um, and then using F1 TV Pro with F1 Multiview or Multiview for F1 is literally like if you like seeing all the camera angles and everything else, it is an absolute must. Uh, I use it during my watch along streams, which I'll be hosting on twitch.tv front slash B-R-R-R-A-K-E. Um, every Saturday and Sunday, I will be live. Uh, and if there's qualifying on a Friday, I'll probably do that too because I'm a sicko. But F1 TV uh, and multi-view for F1, game changer for consuming Formula 1. Uh, all, the, all the angles, um, you can see all the onboards, you can see uh, the telemetry, the timing data, whenever you want. You don't have to wait for the ticker on the TV to flip around. You've got access to everything. Absolutely freaking awesome. And, the, you know, the F1 TV live timing web app is fine. But multi-viewer one is insane. It is insane. Um, it's it's, it's that good. Once you go multi-viewer, you don't go back. No, I can't watch. Like, I tried to watch a race at a racetrack. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm never coming back here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, not allowed, you're not allowed back at any racetracks, are you? Yeah, I am. I haven't been banned. It's just like, it's one of those things. I talked to somebody uh, from the from the paddock this afternoon. And it's like, when they go to the race, it's like, I'm supposed to be doing something. What am I doing here? But uh, yeah. So mm. let's, let's let's talk about winter testing. Winter testing yeah. has changed this year. Something yeah, that caught me off guard. I was like, "Wait, are you guys serious?" What are the uh, three days? Yeah, three days in Bahrain, and then we go straight into a Grand Prix. But yep. in years past, there were three whole sessions of testing. You know, it, it would usually it used to be like Jerez, Barcelona, Barcelona. Then one year it was Jerez. Barcelona, Bahrain, and now it's just Bahrain. Three days last year. This, I mean, for anybody that's not familiar, this car is very similar to last year's car. I know a lot of people are bringing like updates that look like you know the new bodywork, but really under the under the top, there's not that much that's changed about these cars. Yes, they are new cars, but there's not like a drastic overhaul in regulations like we had last year. This is this is just um, an evolution. This car, and I don't think we'll see that many huge changes until we get to 2026 with the new engine regulation so and i don't even think they know what the performance regs look mm. like that i think where we've had these engines now for a while i think they aren't as dramatic as like blowing up every two seconds as when they were like in 2014 and 15 and that so yeah three days of testing it's not ideal but it's not as bad as it could be if that makes sense man I, so i was in 2014 the first year of the v6 turbo hybrids i was at Force India, who had a Mercedes power unit. That thing was awesome. And back in the day, the, the Renault and Red Bull combination, they didn't get a whole lot of testing done those first. I, I, I need to look it up. We'll look it up for um, next episode, maybe. But uh, they didn't... I remember the Red Bull having holes drilled into the side pods because the damn thing just could not keep the temperature down. Yeah, I, I don't want to go into details, but I heard some absolute horror stories. And if you want to see what happened, go look at how many laps they did in the 2014 winter tests. They didn't do very many, and unfortunately that season they also didn't do particularly well. Tough. No. Mm. Big tough. But, um, yeah, there you go. But after that, that they, they got a little bit better. I think the Renault finally came around, and 
they just packaged a monster and didn't leave any room, which was interesting because this this car, the or last year's car, it was a new regulation, and it was like by virtue of being quite conservative and calculated on everything they did, not being too aggressive in anything. Philosophically, it kind of paid off because while other teams were being destroyed by porpoising and everything else, Red Bull was like, yeah, we're good. Honda, the, the, the Red Bull powertrains, Honda, whatever you want to call it, also yeah. very good. So uh, that's 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 how testing can go. But this, this year, we've only got one test of three days across Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then uh, the guys and gals will be back at the track Thursday for uh, the Grand Prix the next week. Yeah, straight into it. Mm. Doesn't leave a huge amount of uh, room or time for emergency upgrades or anything like that, does it? No. Uh, so it sounds like Red Bull only did 182 laps in the 2014 winter tests, second to last. Thank you, uh, Sinzez, for that in the uh, Twitch chat. I appreciate that. But yeah, it was down. They were down horrendously bad. I can't imagine doing like that. Um, you just sat there, like waiting for the car to be on on fire. <laughs> yeah fun times fun times but one of the internet's favorite things to do at winter testing is to completely overreact to things that uh lap times and things like that but uh shall we shall we you know set the record straight about lap times at testing uh yeah if you see some lap times at testing you should definitely if your team's looking good go just instead of putting some money on them on the, on the bookies um, you can just go to buy me a coffee um, and is it engine braking pot? Just donate the money there. We'll take care of it for you. Yeah, help help support more, us. More chance of us winning. Yeah, winning a bet than uh, you. Yeah, don't, 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 don't get too uh, involved in winter testing. And it's it's on one hand, it's like we can get into it. Like I think some teams are deliberately hiding the pace, but at the end of the day, everybody is like the only thing you can really do is turn the engine down, which is clear. Because you can see their top speeds and everything else. And then you can see their lap times and data. You know when people are sandbagging. You may not be able to tell by how much. But at the end of the day, in order to test your car to find out the weaknesses of your car, you have to put it in those vulnerable places at the high limits of the performance of the car. And if you don't do that, you're going to rock up to the next week at the exact same track and look like a bunch of dorks. Which could happen anyway, even if you are, for the most part, playing your hand by day three of the test. Yeah, and I think as well, this three-day format will uh, produce some funky results and times because normally when it used to be split across two weeks, you sort of had your first four days of testing or three days or when and whenever as like, no, you're not doing your glory runs or anything like that. You're just trying to get the mileage in and get all your set up baselines and things like that. Uh, your aero runs and things like that. When then in the second week, sort of like the last day, everyone sort of went onto low fuel and yeah, turned up the PU to see what they could get out of it. Yeah, but um, before before we even rock up to testing, teams have had some very valuable track time, um, which is not testing, which they call filming days. So, uh, I think the Ferrari launch was a promotional day, which was limited to like twenty five kilometers or something like that. Uh, but you still get a filming day, which is a hundred kilometers on non-race tires it's a different compound it's a different construction um they try to make them similar in terms of stiffness so your ride heights aren't all out of whack but but people are using those tests and I, apparently mercedes had quite a few issues uh they had some misfires and some stutters and stuff on their uh their run i heard that and people are freaking out about it like honestly they'll be okay they will be yeah. okay uh, i think i said to someone on twitter if you t if you do a shakedown day and your car hasn't thrown up a bunch of errors or something's burning, then I'd be more concerned. Well, either that or you've got one of those super... And I think a handful of teams, um, probably the bigger teams, have these full chassis dyno test beds where you can test a lot of the systems that the car at once. So that's kind of what it looks like. You go, you know, full car dyno test bed, make sure everything's happy, gearbox and engine are talking, cooling's roughly working, no leaks. Um, you're loading the gearbox, you're loading the engine, you're testing everything else. You go to your filming day, you find a couple more Grimmins there, and then you fly your cars out to Bahrain this year, and it's testing time. Yeah, baby. So, 
here's a good question. Obviously, my background in F1, I wasn't necessarily too involved in this aspect, but how valuable is the information that you can get from a shakedown? I think the shakedowns for me were like this. It's your first opportunity to make sure, one, all of your sensors are working. Do you know where the ride height of the car is, which is the most, like one of the, the first order impacts to the way your arrow is performing. So are your ride heights working? Is your suspension measurements working? Are um, your ride height lasers working? Um, all the other sensors that tell you about the, the load cells that measure the force and all the linkages and everything else, like you ha if those are working right, you can be happy that when you roll out in testing, you can very quickly compare your car to your models and very quickly identify things that are not as you predicted and then either fix the car or fix the models so that you're getting ready in your simulations for race one or race two or race three or your development targets for three months time are much more robust and more accurate so shake at any time the car is on track that is golden opportunity and you have to a make sure everything's working properly because garbage in garbage out and if you can't measure what's happening with the car um, you could just look at the stopwatch and Formula One's not about looking at the stopwatch anymore. That's, you know, that's obvious. It's about getting the less, those tiny details and understanding how the tires are performing, how the air is performing, making sure your sensors are happy. And that's huge. And it sounds so boring, but like literally that is shakedown day. I couldn't wait in my last, you know, was it from 2018 to 2021? I was a simulator performance engineer and in winter testing, one of my big jobs was model correlation to make sure that everything we've simulated matches what we're getting on track. And if those sensors aren't working right, I'm sad. And we're spending a lot of time trying to fix those stuff. That is, that is gold dust. But, um, I'll tell you what else is gold dust and is something that we should now use as the tagline for this podcast. And that's the line that you just said earlier, uh, garbage in, garbage out, that's garbage in, new... garbage out. The new engine breaking motto. No, no, the, the, that tagline is not these nuts, uh, Thomas. That's not it. It is literally garbage in, garbage out. Welcome to the engine breaking podcast. Another episode of. Uh, I opened up Twitter today, and this is this is all you got. Garbage. We're gonna have I to open up Twitter and immediately doubled my medication. Yeah, exactly. And, and to be fair, can we? Can everybody, if you're listening to this podcast and you're and you're new to us or um, your longtime listener or viewer or Twitch stream friend, be nice to people on the internet. I don't want to see you guys being dickheads to people. Like, the, like seriously, the season is going to be way too long. we got, what, 23 races? It's not that deep. Whoever hurt you, forgive mm -hmm. them. Let it go. Have, have fun. Be nice to people. We'll, we'll do our best, all right? Yeah, I mean... Not that I built my Twitter following off the back of being a toxic bellend, but yeah. You, yours is different. If you can't take a fucking joke that's obviously a fucking joke, I mean, come on. Yeah. It, my Twitter account is a joke, much like my career. Garbage in, garbage out, man. That's it, this baby. It's a tagline. Let's get them. Oh, my God. But um, I, I think just before we go into some of the other stuff, like rules of testing, and I think you'll see this, is like it's with anything keep the car running the car has to be running if you have a huge issue um you you have to avoid those at all costs and you know you, you can't stop the car to fix a sensor unless it's like a sensor so let's talk about this you you talk you hinted at it a minute ago like before when you had two four-day tests or three four-day tests you would st you'd structure your test at the start of it you'd be doing your arrow rakes and everything else which you, you tweeted about today i can't wait to see all those hideous like pieces of aluminium piping hanging off the car and it, you'd start with part. yeah you start with you start with gathering the data on the really you know obscure stuff to make sure that's performing right and then at the end of the test you get into the performance but we're condensing all that into three days man stressful it is stressful but um keep... there's not been a, there's not been a huge amount of regulation changes there between sort of no so in theory i mean a lot of the chassis are still going to be the same PUs are going to be more or less the same because they're frozen. Yep. I, I think you'll see a lot of teams because you've got a lot of new... I mean, like, look at look at the side pods that everybody's rocking up with. This Mercedes got this quarter pod, half pod weird thing, and we don't even know if that's what they're going to rock up with at the test. Um, the Aston Martin has those super duper... Like, they've got the, the side pods come out, and then there's the launch ramp that goes down to the back floor. Mm. Uh, we're going to be... Um... 
I officially tweeted uh, Scarves, and I have put in my petition to have that Aston Martin concept name the bobsled pods. Okay. Because they like look the... like a bobsled track. <laughs> Just right down into the feed and the diffuser. Yeah. That's 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 really good. Did you did it stick? Yeah, no, he agreed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the old bobsled ramps, but I think you're going to be seeing a lot of instrumentation. And just just to just to clarify, because you you posted on Engine Mode 11 on Twitter some of these pictures of these huge they call them aerodynamic rakes, and those you can't run those. Yeah, I think you can run them in FP1 on some tracks, but like teams are really trying to understand all these concepts that we've thrown at the car in the wind tunnel. Are these making sense? And the only way to check those those pressure distributions and flow fields is to put these big massive rakes as, as they're called that could they could hang way off the car they could be in the mid body they can be behind the front wheels they could be you know back near the diffuser they can even be we've, we've seen them hang off the back of the car you remember some of those the diffuser rakes that like literally just like extend yeah, yeah, like, like a the, foot off the back of the car the ferrari one that looked like it was someone's fence had gone through a tornado <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was like all twisted and but yeah, so those those are things, and they, the teams don't get a chance to run those very much later. And you've just come up with a new concept. Check that. And a lot of the time, it's a to check that the car is working properly, and the other part of that is to say, right, this is how the car is performing. Do our tools match what's happening? Because if we if we didn't predict that, we've got some other problems. And then you correct those things in your tools and say, okay, this matches the car. And now we can have higher confidence as we're developing the car throughout the season, unless you've been naughty and spent too much money on five guys. Yeah, and you'll sometimes hear throughout the season people talking about correlation issues, and that's basically where real life doesn't match up with the wind tunnel or the simulator or whatever. Yep. And that's what they're trying to find exactly. out. Just get, get data in. They want good data in, and they get good performance out, but not always. Not always. But um, what else we got? I mean, so I, I, think, I think the weekend, if you're looking what to expect, um, if you're going to bet on people to be fast or slow for race one don't do that just go to buy me a coffee and engine braking and uh that that'll put a better use of your money honestly because winter testing we don't know we saw last year mercedes and the car looked difficult but i think mercedes were close to the top or at the top of the time sheets at the final day of testing last year and it's like they rock up to bar to bar in it's like mm, they well. had two fucking cars last year didn't they yeah they changed it. That's yeah. They sort of had a regular-ish looking car, and then all of a sudden it's ha ha, fooled ya, fooled ya. We've got an even slower car, <laughs> suckers. <laughs> oh no, we fooled ourselves. The uh, <laughs> reverse jinx. No. Oh, but yeah. So uh, the, the test will basically be biased to the first day, making sure that you understand what you've got. The second day, um, tuning some performance into it and balance and making sure it's right and that'll happen since the first run of the first day make sure the balance is happy the drivers are happy with the car and then by the third day you'll see them uh probably doing some high fuel maybe a full race distance simulation here's here's a funny one there's a so ah actually come we'll come back to the funny one in a second but one thing that teams will also do is test uh, their cooling systems you might see them stopping uh, in the pit lane and just idling their car and seeing how long they can hold an idle because for the race start, you know, you, you statistically, you know how long race starts can happen. If you're at the front of the grid, if you're qualifying on pole, you're sitting stationary for a very long time. So your car has to be able to uh, basically, if it gets too hot, it blows a valve and you lose all your water out of your radiators and your car goes, ah, and it doesn't, it doesn't make it. Exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does that. Um, another thing teams will try to do is uh, do a fuel runout test where they will run the fuel system down as low as possible. And if you're a polite team, you will do that just before the lunch break, which usually runs ruins some people's performance runs. Imagine you're trying to get a qualifying run in at the lunch break and uh, the, f the fucking Force India Racing Point Aston Martin is like, hey, we, uh, we did our fuel runout test and we accidentally timed it wrong and we ran out of fuel five minutes before the end of the session. And they've got to go away and fix some fuel system issues. So you do that before lunch yep. or at the end of the day. But did you know that there's a test that they don't do until the end of the last day? Or at the end of the uh, day? Is this the reverse gear in case we detonate the gearbox test? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the tests that teams like to save until late in the day. Because like you can't use reverse in the pit lane, but you often will need to use reverse on the track. It's a pain in the ass to get the car into reverse. It's very fiddly. Um, but sometimes... The reverse gear is not really 
It's not really built built for power or for speed. It's built no, to be it's, like it's I'm built, here. It's built because it's in the regulations. It's yeah. not built to be used. Yeah. Like you use it once and then that's it. You've written off the gearbox. N not quite that bad, but it's it's literally like that. And sometimes it's like they don't know. It's like you know, reverse gear selection is when well, you can grenade the gearbox. Imagine you're in first gear and reverse gear simultaneously. What happens then? It gets reduced to its component form. It yeah. looks like a Meccano set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a little bit of a iron ferrous slushy that comes out of the drain plug when you uh, come back in, or you get blessed with a hole in the side of the gearbox casing. But yeah. that's and when you pull all that lovely slushy liquid out, it's uh, whoever broke it has to drink it. <laughs> That is, I, honestly, that is one of the most disgusting smells is differential fluid on a normal race car or you know, the gearbox lubricant. Gearbox lube just stinks. I don't know what it is. It smells like rotten McDonald's. But that's that's also ironic because I'm pretty sure McDonald's food has a half-life of like 100 years. There's so many preservatives in that shit. There's no way. Mm. No, Ain't no it way. It doesn't rot. No. I mean, I've eaten it for 34 years and I'm still alive, so... Dude, that's honestly one of my my guilty things is uh, when I go shopping, there's a Macca's at the Tesco near me. I was like, oh, I haven't had lunch oh. yet today. Bummer. I guess I'll just have to have McDonald's. What is it with us becoming, I say becoming, being fat shits? Because last, <laughs> last week, last time it was In-N-Out Burger versus Five Guys, and now we're bringing up McDonald's. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's just a guilty pleasure. It's not, it's not even that nice. It's just like, uh, well, hey, real quick, what's your, what's your Macca's order while we're on it? Ah, oh, man. It's so I am I like to flirt around the menu. I don't have like a cut and paste oh. sort of order. Um, but I do like the new McCrispy they've got out. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if our American friends have the McCrispy, but it's a fried chicken sandwich. It actually looks like real chicken when you bite into it. It doesn't look processed. Yeah, it I mean, looks... I'm sure it is processed within an inch of its life, but still. It's nice, yeah. But uh, the crispy slaps or uh, just a classic Big Mac, man. Big classic old Mac. Big old nah, Mac. See, I think, I don't know what how the fuck we've ended up here, but Big Macs, I don't know if it's a UK thing or global, but they always look like they've already been in a car crash when you open the box. It's like... <laughs> it's all slammed and like slanted. Yeah, We're getting yeah. way off topic. This And any of you sickos still listening to the podcast, we, we adore Thanks. you. Yeah, but I'm craving McDonald's right now. But remember, if you're listening in the car, give us a little toot toot. We'll yeah. hear you. Uh, uh. Oh. Shall we, uh, shall we rock on to our little predictions poll that you put out on the Twitter nuts? Is, is yeah. that what we got next? Well, we have... I, I asked the uh, audience... That's that's all of you, and we, yep. we appreciate you guys, and we cannot wait for the season to do a full season of Formula One with you fraudulent sons of guns. I know, and if this is your first episode, congratulations for lasting this long. Yeah. Um, which is something my wife also says to me. And um... <laughs> It's your first episode, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for hanging around. <sighs> oh dear. Right, yeah, sorry. What was the question? Yeah, so basically I asked the Twitterverse... Uh, what's your favorite livery? And uh, the results surprised me a little bit. But not too much. So let's go bottom up. Because no good story started top down. Right. Mm. In last place, with a measly 3.7% of the votes. We, of which we had 784 responses to this. So um, mm -hmm. everybody so that, that participated, thank you. And if you don't participate... Uh, Elon's going to make Twitter even worse. So go ahead and follow Engine Breaking on Twitter. Yeah. 3.7% uh, last place. <sighs> it's Williams, I'm afraid. Really? Yeah. I thought I, w I was there in person. I thought that car looked pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. I forgot you got. How did you black that? It's some, some young guy. Come on, tell everyone that's listening how you managed to black your way. Wait, did we Williams. not talk about this already? No, I don't think so. Williams was after the last episode. Oh. I forgot. So uh, I, I was invited with a handful of uh, other esports uh, creators. Uh, there are a bunch of buddies that I'm used to seeing all the time around on the internet about F1 and esports and some FIFA guys out there. Um, we got invited to see their reveal. Uh, guys and gals. Sorry, not just dudes. I, I say dudes. I call my girlfriend dude. She doesn't like that. And I'm working on it. I don't mean it like that. But 
it was it was super cool it was it was a bunch of the traditional media uh you know your 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 pen and paper your your video whatever else and then uh, a handful of content creators to just share that story with our audiences so we got to see the car reveal uh, they talked about their new partnership with golf uh oil uh we got to see their esports lounge we got to set a some lap times on the f1 simulators which is pretty good uh team at marduk won that one uh alex gillen called uh he got second ggs i, I tomo finished somewhere else and there's a couple sweats and a couple gamers but uh that was super fun we got to see their um what do you call it they had a museum. They've got a museum with all their old Formula One cars. That was so, so cool to yeah. see so much history in that space. It was it was fantastic. And then just hung around. And after that, got Nando's with a couple of the people on the way back on our way through Oxford. So, uh, I like, I noticed how you didn't say in that where you finished out of everyone. Oh, I was like, I was, they gave prizes for the top six. Uh, and I was seventh or something out of like 12. Uh, I play F122 same. probably five times ever, so that wasn't particularly surprising. <laughs> yeah, same. Same, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, there you go. That was Blake's big day out. It was so cool. And it's, it's cool to see, like, we saw, um, we've been seeing a lot of content creators at all these reveals and car launches. And I, I think that also, uh, it goes to show you that content creation and, and not, I, I'm, I think we're more content creators and influencers we're not influencers that's something different but i think we're going to start to play a bigger picture in the content economy surrounding formula one i think formula one understands it now that they have a, a better way to reach their audiences so uh if you're listening we'd love to come do some content for you get us involved yeah. i will sound just this interested in real life as i do on the podcast exactly nailed it now mate. i'm going to I'm going to blow some smoke up your ass now because I understand that somebody at the uh, Williams launch recognized you. Oh, yeah. Someone that likes to dye their hair. Yeah. He's nice. Uh, Mr. Albon. Because I, I, I used that. to. That's I, how you know you've made it in life. Uh, uh, yeah. And also working with him in the simulator for the past four or five years. It's like, you're right, mate. Don't He's, worry about that bit. <laughs> don't worry about that bit. Uh, one of the most genuinely nice and, um, insanely underrated talent i'm i'm looking to see him rocking and rolling this year what a what a nice dude it was good to see alex but uh he was in really good spirits ready for the season and uh i i think that they know that the car is last year was not particularly excellent and uh i think they're on the rebuild phase right now to get some performance back into the car and uh what a better dude to do it than mr albon legend yeah i think williams is one of those teams where i don't think Anybody necessarily actively dislikes them and they all want them to do well. Mm, I think that's very sound. Mm. But nobody rates their livery because they're in last place in our poll. So can't win them all. Sorry, Williams. Unlucky. Unlucky. Uh, next up on the... Uh, P9. P9. And I agree with this fully. Alpha Tauri with 14 votes. Oof. Wait, hang on. That can't be right. Now the, oh, fuck. this is this is way this, you, Williams is like dude Google what did you guys do I don't know I'll tell you right. what I think I th I'll tell you who I think is dead last who do you think is dead last I think Alpine the regular blue edition with nine votes we've just roasted Williams I know why is this not worked anyway it, it's the Google uh, poll thing so I, th I think say Google right yeah. so we've just spent 10 minutes <laughs> Slacking off Williams. Well, we, we, could, we could skip Williams when we get to him. So Alpine, uh, dead last with nine votes, one point one percent. Oof. Fraudulent polls by fraudulent people on fraudulent Ooh. podcasts. Anyway, Alpine, you actually suck the most in terms of livery. Um, <laughs> we didn't get invited to your launch either, and it was in yeah, London. So fuck you. <laughs> Take your <laughs> shitty fucking car. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Take your baguette mobile and get out of here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't actually hate the Alpine livery. I don't either. I think, I think I, it's I, worse. Yeah, but like all if, out there. Am I going to pick that over some of these absolute bangers? Well, nah, no, okay. nah. And you had to pick one. This is this wasn't going to like rate them on a scale to ten. It's like no. pick your favorite. Um, P two from the back. 
Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri. Ugh. I I'm liked so... it. I no, I'm over it. I liked it, man, with a little bit of the red. Mm. Anyway, we're gonna. No, we... I think I think the bit of the red makes it worse. I think if it wasn't with if it wasn't with the red, it'd just be like another really dark, vague car. I don't know. What's next? What's next? Yeah, but uh, I believe it's Macca's. I'm not into the papaya McLaren. Sorry. You know what I don't like about it the most? The fucking Google Chrome wheel covers. I love those, man. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Oh, oh, you guys are you guys are savages. Um. Next. Next. Oh, this this is how oh, how are we going to cope with this? Red Bull Racing. What is that? <sighs> what have you guys done? Twenty six of you guys. All right, like you you guys, all twenty six of you must be. How much are you guys getting paid? Mm. <laughs> As Christian Horner has refreshed the web page 26 times to do those votes. <laughs> oh my god, the Williams has beat the Red Bull in the livery. Oh. Uh, oh. So they're not last like we just spent 10 minutes talking about. They've actually beaten Red Bull. Yep. Next up. Uh who's next up? Is it Aston Martin? It's Haas. Haas. Where's that? Haas. This fucking Google Forms. I'm never doing this again. Oh yeah, you're right. Haas. 43 votes. Not too bad. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was alright. It's just bl another black and red car. Yeah. Nah. It, it's better than what they have in the past. As I'm I'm surprised to see the Aston Martin up next, honestly. People like the green. Yeah, I mean it looks it does look like a very sharp car. It looks good. It's a nice color. Hmm. Next up. This is third place now, isn't it? Mm. Third place. Your first podium finisher of the best livery of 2023. Everybody is... dump along on your desks if you're at work. I know your cubicle mates, your colleagues, your mom, mm. your dad. And if you're in a car, rip up that e-brake and do a fat burnout. <laughs> I don't care if you're on the highway. <laughs> it's just worth the pile up. It's uh, Alfa Romeo in P3. <laughs> oh... I can see that the car looks. Yeah, I, the car looks good. It. Our buddy Matt Emmis was uh, did a little video on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna type it in the Twitch chat right now. Yeah, he did. He was out at uh, their factory and uh, got a little talk about the livery and the car. It looks looks awesome. Um, and that car, that that reveal car, is actually getting auctioned off. We don't need to plug who it is because they didn't right, pay us. But they're yeah, gonna auction right. off their reveal car, so you could win I a like, car. I like how you just said I'm gonna put a link in the chat, and you literally just wrote in the chat. Matt Amy's his name. Yeah, but that, you can. That's not a link. I believe that you can type his name into Google and find him. I believe in you. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, sorry. Now P two. <laughs> I. Who's chronically P two in life? Uh the damn near P three if they're not lucky, but it's going to be Ferrari. Ferrari. I like we both went. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm surprised it's as high as P two. To be honest, I like. I don't hate it. I love it. Yeah, well, I love okay. it. But I with a whopping. No, I'm done with Ferrari. They're not paid us. We're not talking anymore. Yeah, about your P two. That's it. Done. Get wrecked. A whopping forty six point three percent of the vote goes to Mercedes. Mercedes. It's nearly half of the people that voted in this. I voted for Mercedes. Mercedes. Was was the best look. <laughs> I voted for Mercedes. It looks. It looks like the black, the carbon, the Patronus, turquoise. <sighs> I like yeah. it. I'm just surprised that the majority of people like the landslide victory, considering I've seen so many people saying, oh, this all black car. Uh. Yeah. A I, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. <laughs> so, so there you go. I, I think none of the, the only thing that's surprising me is that Alpine doesn't surprise me. That car, Alpine and McLaren, yeah, I'm down with those guys being at the bottom of the pile. In terms of the livery, I'm not crazy about this McLaren papaya. And I'm nobody gives a fuck about Red Bull. Yeah. Livery. So yeah, okay. There you go. What and was... we did some bonus question. I did some hot take. Uh, yeah, I asked people <laughs> to chuck in some hottest takes. You wanna go through the, you wanna go through the best? Uh, I'm starting from top to bottom. What's your first one? We'll see if our list um, is synced up. So uh I literally have a raw output and I just went through and just picked a couple. Okay, what do you got? I'll, I'll, I've got a couple I think are pretty good. Give me this. Give me the spicy ones. And this is no, this is not our hot take segment. This is you guys, and we're not going to spend too much time on them. But some of them are funny as fuck. 
Um, so hot yeah. takes, hot takes, mind you, hot takes. Not even there's a couple oh. warm takes in here, but go on. This one, this one is so fucking toxic. <laughs> Uh, but I'm subscribed to it anyway. <laughs> and it's sort of semi-related to what I said at the beginning of the show. Oh my god. Mick Schumacher gets more points as a reserve driver in in a race this year than one of the Haas drivers gets during the whole season. Oh, oh that's... That's fucked. Uh, that is... That is insane. Oh god, sorry. Oh, subscribed. Um... Uh, Dan calls Helmet to ask for his job back. <laughs> I don't have his number, and uh, even if I did, I think Helmet's probably blocked me, to be honest. Oh, uh, here's a good one. Alonso to upset everyone at Aston Martin and take performance away from the team <laughs> while Alpine have had a good year. We asked you guys for hot takes, not probability. Not truth. Yeah, Jesus. Come on. Oh, what else you got? Oh. Uh... Uh, Logan Sargent, World Drivers Champion. Um, whoever wrote that, I want the name of your dealer. Yeah. Like, what? what is that? What kind of powders or is that organic stuff? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, there's another one here. Hulk will finally podium. Listen, I wanted hottest takes. Not the most inconceivable possibility known to man. Hey, well, I'm back. While I'm on the while I'm on the Dark Lord train, Alonzo will not only win a few races, but he will also get a few podiums. He will finish his best of the rest and have points tally that is closer to the top three than the rest of the grid to him. That also, I need access to your dealer's um, email address or WhatsApp or Snapchat or something, man. Mm. Haas will finish top five in the constructors. Mm hmm. How how um on the Nando's spice scale, how how spicy is that? Not very. I think it no? could I think it could happen, but I honestly medium. I medium. Ah uh, it's a medium. Medium yeah. spice. Yeah, I, I I think it will at the end of the season you'd say that was a hot take. So I think it's a probability okay. that they won't do it. So maybe maybe it's a little bit warmer than a medium. It's like a four or it's a six maybe. Um Here's here's a couple interesting. These are speculations as far as after the season. Hamilton wins the World Drivers Championship, and then Norris and Leclerc move to McLaren. One of those. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Hamilton Ham wins his eighth, then retires. Hmm. Which I can I can see that as a possibility. I would. I think. I think, I think if they're uncompetitive this year, he might retire anyway. Like, what what else does he need to prove? You know. Oh, okay. So you think, regardless, this is it. This is his last season. I, I think he's still got plenty more. Like he's still got it for sure. But when when you've achieved that much, can you really? If Mercedes can't turn this year around, are you going to hang around for the new regs? What twenty twenty six? Yeah, three more years in him. I don't know. Lewis is thirty eight years old. He will be. Yeah. How old's Alonso? He's still going. I mean, granted, he is forty-one by hate. Yeah, he okay. witchcraft. Yeah, Alonso's forty-one. Alonso is still fueled by um, the hatred of two thousand and eight. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I don't know, man. What is there? Is there any more super spicy ones speaking, in there? Yeah, speaking of Alonso, uh, someone's put Lance Stroll will continue his streak and retire Fernando Alonso. <laughs> What's keeping him going? Who, Alonso? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. The shithousery. Yeah, he just fucking... I, I reckon he just loves it. Um, here's another good one. No first place finishes this season for Ferrari. I think, I think that's a hot take. I think that's a hot take. Do you think... I hope they don't win any, because uh, if they win the championship, I've got to drive to Marinello in a Fiat Panda. Have you secured the car yet? If anybody doesn't know... We'll, we'll, here's the quick version. Dan basically said if Ferrari win drivers or constructors championship, he's going to hand write an apology letter and deliver it to Marinello in a Fiat Panda. We may or may not have roped a couple people into doing this trip. Yeah. For all the Ferrari slander that I continuously put out on this podcast. Yeah. But tis, tis, I mean, I like it. I like the Tifos. You don't get me wrong. I just, I just enjoy the drama. Exactly. Love it. Um, I think everything else in there, there's nothing like I was really surprised and I, I, hats off 
to to all of you, there was nothing really super toxic in there, which I was expecting. Uh, my second favorite was hottest hot take of 2023. Yo, mom. Thanks. Yeah, there's someone in here that wrote uh, all Americans are frauds apart from you. Hot take. Yeah. Um. Here's here's one. Oh, the, I saw this one. This one's kind of actually spicy. The biggest frauds of the 2023 season will be DeVries and Hamilton. Who hurt Oof. this person? Who hurt this person? Hmm. Anyway. Alvin, Alvin or Gasly will uh, get a call up to Red Bull for 2024. I don't <laughs> think Gasly's ever going back there. I think he's quite happy and tucked up in bed with Alpine. Yeah, he's done. So... I, I think that's it for the, the hot takes. You guys are going to have to try a little bit harder. Those were like, I think the hottest we had was like a 7 out of 10. Get good. The hottest take was my one saying that <laughs> Mick Schumacher is going to sub in and get a podium. <laughs> oh. In the Aston Martin. And we're just going to cut to a shot of Nico Hulkenberg giving, you remember that? There's that, um, fuck, I forgot what race it was, but where there's like this Alonso just sitting there in his helmet, just staring off into space. <laughs> I think when he was in Ferrari, I think he just lost the championship. I think it was he's just like found dead yards inside there. Yeah, dead inside. But um, are you uh? Let's let's talk about testing. Is now testing is here. Are you doing any live stream for testing? So I cannot commit to saying I will. Okay. Um, because in the time between the two podcasts, last time and this one, um, my team all quit their job. So I'm doing three people's worth of work at the moment. Wow. Get this. Okay. Sorry, I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of burping. Sorry. That's okay. There we go. Edited that out. Eh. Um get this in a turnaround of events. Guess who's been invited to do some uh streaming content with WTF one for the testing? Not you. Me. <laughs> no way now that what a turnaround <laughs> what now that maddie's gone they're like finally we can have the engine mode that will be spectacular uh don't plug them screw those guys no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i was just gonna say i was like wait i was like wait maddie, how the, maddie turn, left. how the tables have turned yeah, they have ah uh, okay so I, I guess we'll be keeping an eye out for the socials for uh details regarding that i didn't say i was gonna do it i just say i'm just saying oh you fucking dork we don't know if you can do it because you might be stuck at ball and chain the desk job, bruh. Um, yeah, exactly. hey, hey. I've got to go. I did again off topic, but I don't care. I did uh Liverpool this weekend for work, Wee. which is like a four and a half hour drive there and then a four and a half hour drive back. And I'm doing it again tomorrow, so I mean, I'm just out on the road out on the road again it's like i'm traveling around like i did in f1 it's back in the come, day full circle you can't get away circle. from it well here's you know what dude i think i found the perfect way for you to settle your argument or whatever with uh maddie from formerly of wtf1 now of p1 maddie yeah. plays escape from tarkov i've come to find out I'll fucking scab him. Yeah, you, uh, Maddie plays Escape from Tarkov. I think we need to line up this 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 match. Factory one v one me on factory. Me one v one me on factory. Biznatch. <laughs> GG dog water. Get the fuck off my game. <laughs> Get good scrub. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll sort it out. I'll, uh, I'll thank you. I'll sort it out. Um, but okay, so TBC. Um, I think what I'm going to be doing for testing is a couple of hours after the tests are over each day, I'll do a little performance summary. So I'll look at the data, uh, if hopefully the data is working and our workbooks work, and I'll do a little performance summary after each day of testing. So that's so that'll be Friday, Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then Monday or Tuesday, we'll do a little um, roundup. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do a, a post-testing podcast before the race. Yeah, that'd be perfect. So we'll, you guys will see regular scheduled format is now calling. I'll call it Breaks Notebook. No, I'll call it Ted's Notebook that I wrote for Ted. But we do the notebook because he doesn't do his notebook. We do his notebook. Not really. I don't know. No, no, it is us. Let's just start that vicious rumor. It's us. I, I don't want to want that. I don't want to do that. 
No, I don't think so. Not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, if you want if you want us to do that and you want to start that rumor, just give us another little toot toot in your car. Uh-uh. Yeah, rip up that e-brake on the highway. Do your best Max Verstappen impersonation. Do a big fat sick burnout. Yeah, and then with, with come out of it unscathed. Obviously, we want you guys yeah. to be safe. Yeah, and just say simply, simply lovely. But anyway, shall we? Uh, shall we call it there? <sighs> yeah, fuck this. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next week after winter testing. Uh, if you haven't left us a glorious five star rating on Apple and Spotify or whatever, um, and if you're listening to this on YouTube. You should definitely leave us a comment and just say we love your podcast and tell your toot, nan toot. tell your nan about it and toot toot. All right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Big up big up your nans. Big up your local butchers. Big up your local in and out or McDonald's. Mm. Big up all of you lot that have just caused collisions on the highway from ripping your e brakes up. <laughs> and everyone that's gonna get an anti social dispersal order for doing toot toots in the street. <laughs> and uh you can you can all fuck off. <laughs>